مرحبا واهلا وسهلا فيكم ويلكم تو انذر سيشن اوف هاو تو ان ذا سيشن اي بي شير وذ يو 10 مور تيبس اون هاو تو ميمورايز ووردز اند فوكابولري مور افكتيفلي ان لفنتان عربيك ذس از اور بارت 2 ليتس دايف ان ماي فيرست تيب فور يو ريد از ماتش از بوسيبل تراي تو ريد عربيك تيكست از ماتش از بوسيبل يو كان ستارت باي تشوزينغ بوكس كولد ايميرجين ريدرز ود اور ريتن فور يونغ عربيك سبيكرز اور ريدرز ذيس بوكس هاف بلانتي اوف سايت ووردز which you can learn from context to help you to improve your vocabulary and also you can find a selection of emerging readers books online and commit to reading a story every day or even try to read a short magazine article in Arabic every day. The idea is to have that continuous reading, to have that continuous thinking Arabic and to have that continuous connection with the words. This would help you very much. Then the other serious question is, where do I start? There are lots of online websites they do offer these or similar services the like of amazon however if you go down to your local bookstore i'm sure you'll find a lot all you need to do is just to ask somebody in the library for emerging readers but in arabic my second tip for you is investigate further in order to increase your vocabulary quickly try to use a thesaurus once you have learned a word very well and it's a good idea to look it up in a thesaurus to help you to look for other synonyms for the same word You can also check the meaning of the synonym in a dictionary to see if there are any other differences or similarities between these words. For example, whether one word is formal and the other is informal, or if one has more positive meaning and the other has more negative meaning. So when you go down and use a thesaurus, it will give you a better idea how to use a word. It will give you more definition on these vocabulary and you will have a better idea on how they're used in terms of similarities and differences using a thesaurus would equip you with higher knowledge when it comes to understanding the differences between certain words certain words are used on a formal setting and others used are informal settings and similarly as you see on the screen if some have positive meanings or maybe some others have more negative meanings and this would help you a lot once you read to have that knowledge it is absolutely invaluable my third tip for you is similarities and differences one of the most frequently asked questions to me is students they tend to ask about certain vocabulary when it comes to comparing them from arabic to their mother tongue for example after you start reading an article or a story in your own language underline 10 words descriptions meaning adjectives or verbs then try to look them up in an arabic dictionary and pay attention to any differences or similarities in the word that you are trying to memorize this would help you to understand the language even further and better when comparing it to your own mother tongue for example as we know between arabic and english we've got the word hab hab which means to love and like And in Arabic as well, we have like, and in English, we have like. However, the word like in English could be used as such as. So we would say, she's like him or he is like her. Students, they tend to use the word hab on the same meaning as we do have in English. And this is something is done by student qua on a regular basis without knowing that actually in Arabic we have mithil. So it's really important when you read a story in your own language try to underline these and try to see the similarities and the different differences between your mother tongue and these words in arabic this would help you to understand the language better and get to use something's called equivalence which would make it a lot easier for you something i'll introduce you to it later down the line my fourth tip for you is word of the day as i'm sure all of you know there are lots of these websites which they do offer as such free service in order to get your email in order to get you subscribed to their main websites and even to convert you to a paying customer however you don't have to but there are lots of similar websites which they do offer so i would definitely recommend to join a similar website they would help you and they will introduce you to new vocabulary every now and then this would help you to learn the word meaning and try to listen to the pronunciation and even to practice lots of exercises and there are lots of websites out there one of the most uh, well known uh, is quizlet and again i'm not uh, paid to promote them however i've used them over the past years and i definitely liked it compared to other 
platforms. So if you want to have a look at that, then definitely look at it where it will help you. However, there are lots of other websites that do this on a regular basis and they will feed you a word every day. As some of you already know, I've published my activity book. This activity book is aimed at absolute beginners and it will continue to more advanced grammar. This book will help you to test your vocabulary. It will help you to test your grammar. It will help you to test you on everything. And most importantly, it will help you to test your level and proficiency in Levantine Arabic. And it is the only book that is dedicated to practice and test your Levantine Arabic. So if you would like it, there's the link below. You could check it out. Flashcards are the most convenient and effective way to study and practice vocabulary. You could start with a simple flashcard, try to write the vocabulary on one side, and draw or cut out a picture of an object or an action, and then glue it on the other side. You could ask a friend or family member to test you. And this is one of the most fun activities I use to use, and to this very day I use it with um, other languages, uh, the like of Japanese. It helps me a lot to practice it. Equally, I would ask a friend or a partner or children to help me to practice these vocabulary and it becomes more of a fun activity rather than a chore and a target for you to hit. So definitely getting other family members involved within this particular activity, it would be more fun. And equally, you never know, they might as well get into the same hobby or get interested maybe as a future career. The previous tip was a simple flashcard. However, in this tip, you could go full flashcard. On one side of the card, draw a simple picture or cut out a picture and glue it on that side. However, on the other side, try to write the word and its part from the speech, whether it's a verb, whether it's a noun, it's a derivative, and so on. Try to write the definition. Try to write one or two sentences using that exact word. This could be from a book or a dictionary or a website. And if possible, try to write other derivatives on the same card that might help you. Plus, try to write other forms of derivatives on the same card and if there are any important notes, for example, regular or irregular verbs or adjectives. And here you could ask the help of a friend. Your friend can hold the card and shows you the picture. And at this time, he could ask you a number of questions. For example, what is this? How do you spell it? What does it mean? Can you see this in a sentence or can you form this in a sentence? Do you know any other forms for the same word? Or do you know any other expressions for the same word? My seventh tip for you is work harder and enjoy later. In Arabic, one of the most intriguing cases that we teach is plural. So when it comes to practicing and memorizing vocabulary with flashcard, I would definitely and highly recommend that you try to write the singular and the plural form on the flashcard for the word that you're trying to memorize. And when it comes to verbs or memorizing verbs, I would definitely recommend to write the past and the present tense and other forms for the same verb that are link it together and will help you to memorize. For example, the active participle. My eighth tip for you is use free resources. One of the most uh, asked questions is what sort of resources I would recommend to everybody. And students tend to kind of always ask the same question. But this is, again, this is uh, normal and natural. I tend to do the same. So when it comes to here, you don't have to always splash the cash. Uh, I would always use free resources, the like of Quizlet. And again, I'm not promoting Quizlet. I am not being paid by them. Simply, I like the website and I've used it quite a lot. So I'll definitely use it if I were you. The nice thing about Quizlet is this website lets you to download other people's flashcards. Let's call it long-term borrow. However, you could make your own. As I mentioned, since the pandemic, I started uh, using this uh, platform and I've had a subscription, which enabled me to add my voice over the word instead of using the AI system very much like the speaking system like Siri or Google AI system. So it's great for you to use it to get that accurate pronunciation, to practice reading and writing and memorize words more efficiently. And I will leave the link in the description below if you want to check it out. It's free. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to create an account or anything. So just feel free to use it. My ninth tip for you as we're talking about flashcards, make differently shaped flashcards for different part of the speech. For example, make square for example, make square cards for verbs, triangle cards for nouns, and round cards for adjectives and adverbs, and rectangle cards for conjunctions. However, you don't have to follow this order, you could make your own. 
But the idea when you try to distinguish, this would help you to create an anchor point and it would help you to remember certain vocabulary, whether you're practicing verbs or nouns or adjectives or adverbs or conjunctions. So I would definitely recommend to give that a try and see whether you like it. My 10th tip for you is as little as often. As I mentioned, there are so many theories when it comes to practicing and memorizing and learning a second language. However, in Arabic, there's only one theory that is going to work the best and most effective way, which is called as little as often. So definitely try to carry your flashcards with you every day. And whenever you've got a few minutes, try to go through them and try to practice them. You could do this with a friend or simply you could just practice by yourself. Alternatively, if you don't like carry cards, you could simply download one of these hundreds and thousands of these apps. And as I was previously talking about Quizlet, Quizlet, they do have an app which you could easily download all the flashcards offline so you don't have to use the data. This was something for me was really helpful. For example, when I commute into London and I use the tube, it will help me to practice my vocabulary while I'm commuting to work. For me personally, the service was great and enabled me to download everything offline and to practice. However, there are lots of other apps and there are actually there are tons of apps out there on each platform, whether that's uh, Apple, you could find them on Android Market or Apple App Store. And with this theory, as little as often, we reach uh, the end of this uh, session. I hope you really enjoyed it and found it helpful and definitely give these tips a try and see which of these might work with you in order to help you to practice and learn Arabic. If you do have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed uh, today's session and have helped you, then don't forget to give a thumbs up and share with your friends and family. So hopefully they as well enjoy it. Till next time, stay safe. Ma'as